Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to finish up our carburetor series on the Rochester Electronic Quadrajet and Dual Jet Carburetors. And I'm going to be showing you the four things that you absolutely need to know how to adjust and adjust correctly to get these things running right. And I'm going to do it all in four minutes or less. You're going to see links up top to the tool videos so you can follow along with the tools I'm using. Let's go and get started. First up is the throttle position sensor. If you don't know what the throttle position sensor does, that is the sensor that tells the engine computer how much you're pushing down on the gas pedal. It's located right here next to the throttle linkage. You can access the adjustment screw through a small hole here. If you have a carburetor that's never been worked on, the hole may be plugged up. In that case, you want to drill a small hole in the plug and insert a very small self-tapping screw. Give it a few turns until the, until the thread starts to bite and then pull it out with a pair of pliers. You're going to use a two and a half millimeter hex head adjustment tool. Insert it in the hole and turn to adjust your throttle position sensor voltage. You can read the voltage with a scan tool or by probing the wires to this connector. Every car is different even for the same motor. So make sure you consult your factory service manual to know what type of voltage your ECM needs to see. Okay, next up, you wanna check your mixture control solenoid plunger travel. The only way to properly do this is to remove the air horn from the carburetor. Take a look inside. Anytime the carburetor is rebuilt, or you have to remove, your mixture control solenoid plunger here. You always wanna count the number of turns on this screw before you take it out. This way, when you put it in, it'll be a heck of a lot easier to get it back to spec. You can see the mixture control solenoid here and the metering rod sitting in the jets. Okay, in order to set this, first we're gonna remove the metering rod from the jet. We're then gonna place our gauging tool here over top making sure that it's firmly seated. Then place the top piece back on, leaving the screw just inserted in the hole. But then again, we're gonna screw that down using the other side of our two and a half millimeter carburetor adjusting screw until when placing pressure on the solenoid piece, we get it to just contact the top of this gauging tool. As you're doing this, make sure you count the number of turns because once we get it just to contact, we're gonna remove it, remove our gauging tool, reinsert our metering rod, and screw it back down that number of turns and your mixture control solenoid will be properly set. Third, we have our idle mixture screws. These are located down here at the bottom of the carburetor on the base plate. Again, if you've had a carburetor that's never been untouched, there may be plugs in these screws. In that case, you're gonna to have to take a hacksaw, cut a few 45 degree angles here along the bottom. There's two dots stamped into the bottom of the carburetor that tell you how deep to go. You'll then have to take a punch and knock the plugs out. Once you've got access to the mixture control screws, you're gonna to need to take two of your flexible carburetor adjustment tools using the double D bit, Notice I've got mine marked the 12 o'clock position so I can keep them synchronized. You're gonna to wanna to do all this with the air cleaner and everything that the car normally runs with on. Your carburetor breathes different when it's got the air cleaner on. You'll then attach a dwell meter to the green dwell test terminal and slowly turn these in or out to get that dwell on the six cylinder scale as close to 25 as you can with the smoothest idle that you can. If the dwell meter is a little off of 25, but you're getting a really smooth idle, stop there and leave it alone. You've got it right where you need it. We're gonna adjust that dwell meter reading a little bit the next step when we adjust the idle air bleed valve. Okay, just one more to go. and We're definitely gonna get it done in under four minutes. Just wanted to take a quick break to say, if you found this video helpful, make sure you tap the like button. If you'd like to follow along with more of my tips and tricks, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Okay, let's get to that idle air bleed valve. 
And finally, you need to get the idle air bleed valve adjustment right. That's located right here at the top of the carburetor. If the carburetor has never been worked on, there may be a plate with a couple of rivets going on across the top. You just have to drill those out and remove the plate to get access to it. The idle air bleed valve can be adjusted using a simple flathead screwdriver. It's very sensitive, so when you make your adjustments, keep an eye on your dwell meter. It will react. Just give it some time. This is your chance to get that dwell reading right around 25 with that perfectly smooth idle. Adjust it in one eighth increments so you can get that dwell meter reading where you need it to be. Okay, guys, that's it. The four things you absolutely have to know how to adjust properly to get your quadrajet or dual jet carburetor running right. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.